Hey everyone, welcome back to the Aerial Media Pros channel. Today we'll be unpacking one of Unique's most advanced aerial copters, the Tornado H920, which has been built for cameras like the Panasonic GH4, as well as for Unique's own line of camera gimbal systems, like what we'll be using today, the Seago 4, which has internal Panasonic GH4 elements, like the sensor and such, with the added capability of zoomable camera lenses. So you can imagine we are very excited to add this to our product line as well as offer it to prosumers like you who will be using this for aerial cinematography. So in this video, we're gonna be walking you through what's in the box and then we'll be moving on to showing you how easy it is to actually get it set up and ready for its first flight. Along the way, I'll be pointing you towards some other videos that will go into more detail about features and functions of the Tornado H920. And uh, by the end of it, you should have a pretty good idea of what to expect with this copter and why we're so excited about it. All right, so before we jump into opening up the box, you do need to know that the Tornado comes separately from the camera gimbal system. That way you can actually choose whatever camera gimbal system you want for the Tornado. So first we're gonna open up the H920, which is essentially just the name for the aerial platform itself. So everything comes with a controller and every batteries and everything you need um, to actually get up in the air. And then we'll unpack the camera gimbal system and get that set up on the copter. So as you can see here, we have a pretty nice hardy case. The great design, I wouldn't necessarily put it in checked baggage at the airport, but for any sort of travel, this is they've packed a lot into this case here. Take off the lid. So nice high quality grade foam here. It extends all the way up to the top. First thing you'll see is an accessory box. Go ahead and open that up. And then here you'll have any sort of cables that you'll need. So we have our charging cables as well as USB. The tool for installing your propellers. And a complimentary lanyard for your rated control. So we'll put that off to the side here. You just easily lift the box here, and here you go. This is the right out of the box Tornado H920. Um, let's, what you'll have to do is actually take away some of the pieces. Everything's compartmentalized here to fit a lot in a, such a small package. And so we'll have to take everything that sits on top in order to get the entire frame out of the case here. So we'll start by removing these propeller packs here. So these are Really great quality carbon fiber propellers, identified with A and B letters, depending on which arm they go on. There you go. We'll take the other one out here. So this will be your A propellers. Next we have batteries. So the kit will come with two batteries. It needs at least two batteries to fly. If you want to have a longer flight time, you can actually put up to three batteries into the Tornado for flight times up to 25 minutes. All right, so we have the batteries out. Right on top here, you'll have a monitor hood for your radio control. And of course, your charger. Now, before we get uh, moving into setting the copter up, you wanna make sure your batteries are charged. So for a more in-depth look at how to charge batteries specifically with the Tornado, go ahead and check out this video and we'll walk you through exactly what you need to know for the A10 charger. Right, it looks like we got an extra set of props, 1B and 1A. Now everything's cleared out. I think we can pull out the copter here. Nice and easy. And I'll just hold this like this while I remove the case. and set it on the ground there. All right, so there's a couple other things in the case here. As you can see, this, this phone removes from the top. Nice and easy there. 
And one of the best parts of the Tornado is right in the bottom there, the SD24 controller. So what's amazing about this is it actually has an Android tablet inside with full ground station controls. And so once on, you'll have a full um, settings menu and you can change all the camera settings as well as some of the functions. If you have two controllers, so let's say you have dual SD24s, you can actually do dual control in the Tornado. One will be the pilot, one will be the camera operator. It'll also be compatible with the SD16, um, which is a smaller controller for pilot operation. So I'll move those out of the way really quick here. There's some side pockets in the case, which actually include roller wheels for the case here. So there'll be four of those and those are just an easy snap on the bottom in case you're on a set where you can actually roll things around and you need to get moving quickly. And just double check the other side. And it looks like we are good to go here. All right. So now we're gonna get moving into actually setting up the tornado for flight. So before we begin testing and getting everything set up, we first need to take the gimbal camera out of its case. Now quite possibly one of the greatest features of these unique kits is the fact that each camera gimbal comes with its own handheld stabilizing system. So we'll go ahead and pull it out here. You can take a look. Again, this is the Seago 4. We have our accessories for this in the box, as well as the phone holder that will attach just on the front here. So this actually comes free with every single kit. So it has a, its own battery pack, its own stabilization software and system. So this is actually the back side here. And this is what will actually plug into the copter later but when it's hooked up normally, it just goes into this, this port here. So what we need to do is actually remove it from the handheld gimbal. If you want a more in-depth analysis of the handheld and how everything works, go ahead and check out this video and it'll actually walk you through using the handheld gimbal. Uh, but for now, we're focused on the tornado, so let's get it removed from the top here. First, all you need to do is, if it's plugged into the port, you wanna unplug that, and then just go ahead and twist these knobs on the bottom until it releases the camera from that handheld unit here. All right, so that's good to go. Let's actually just take this off. Make sure you're holding it when you are unscrewing the knobs there so it doesn't drop out from under you. All right. So we actually want the copter facing forward, which is identified by the GPS. So the GPS is always in the front of the copter. We'll switch that around. You can see how light it is just by handling here. The carbon fiber is really nice, super light, and that's what gives it that long flight time. So I'll go ahead and uh, just set this to the side. All we need to do is lift up the first two arms here, and these are secured simply by sliding this down the arm, make sure it's thread correctly, and tighten in place. Once we put the props on, we'll actually do all six of them, but for now we just need them in place so that we can get this area free and put the gimbal underneath. All right, so it's pretty much the same thing. All you need to do is make sure that this cable comes through the top middle so that it's not being pinched. So we'll actually thread the cable through the top there and bring it towards the front of the copter as we slide it all back. Now what's really great about this is the, the switch only takes two or three minutes. And so you can go between on the ground handheld work 
to up in the air with the same footage so you don't have to do color grading and matching of the footage later. It's all coming from the same camera. So go ahead and tighten that in place here. All right, so that's nice and secure in there. Right on the front here, we have a port for this to plug in, just like the handheld gimbal. So just nicely thread that up and lock in place. Make sure everything is secure here. All right, so now if we're going to test the camera feed from the copter, what we first need to do is put the batteries in and then we'll go ahead and turn it on. So I'm actually gonna flip it around here. And two, we're gonna be using two batteries today. Just take this top flap, bring that down. And if you're using only two batteries, you wanna make sure that they are spread evenly on each side with the blue cable here on the bottom. So we'll move out the safety harness here, slide it into its position. And this white cable is only for the balance charger, so make sure that's tucked away. Again, make sure the blue is on the bottom here. And you're just gonna go ahead and plug it right into the top of the copter here. There we go. There's that, same for the other. Make sure blue is on the bottom. Slide it in and plug into the top. And they have a nice uh, Velcro securing so that batteries aren't moving around in the casing. Push that back up and you're ready to go. All right, so let's just get these arms up and secured, like I said before. They're really just twisted secure. Make sure you're not tightening them too tight because you don't want to do anything to these carbon fiber arms. As we go through the testing process, we'll actually wait to put on the props. But we took off the lens cap so everything's balanced correctly. You're gonna wanna go ahead and I'll flip it around so you can see the front here. We'll take our radio control. Turn that on with the button here. And as that boots up, the on and off button for the tornado is right in the front here on the bottom. Go ahead and just turn that on. And you're gonna to wanna to wait just until the camera gimbal has stabilized and is facing forward and centered. So we'll wait for that to boot up. There it goes. And so what we're doing here is just making sure everything's running properly before we even go out to the field and just everything's connected um, so that we can make sure that we are flying when we get out um, to go fly for the first time. You go ahead in your app here, and on the home screen, you'll see three different options, um, RC, FPV, and pad. And we're gonna wanna go into FPV so that we could see and make sure that the camera is sending a video signal. So it'll take a couple moments just to connect and make sure all the video signals working. All right, so it looks like we have a feed there. You can see on the screen. And like I said, if you want a more in-depth look at this controller and all the functions and buttons and everything, as well as a full walkthrough of the app, go ahead and check out this video and that'll walk you through everything you need to know in the application so that when you do and do these tests, you can check and make sure that everything's working properly. It looks like we're good to go, everything's working properly. So we're actually gonna go
go ahead and shut down and install the props. So first you want to shut off the copter and then your transmitter. All right. So now we can get into the installation of the propellers. These are the B propellers, so make sure they line up with the appropriate arms. Should be every other. And make sure the number, the letters are actually facing the top here. So get it, go ahead and put that on here. Same with the A propellers. All right, so from the accessory box, we actually get this nice hex tool, as well as your screws here. And they've got Loctite and washers on them. They're actually split washers. It's really nice. So you want to line up any one of the motor holes with the screw here. You can even apply some pressure. There we go. And just easily, okay, you want these tight but not too tight. You don't want to mess with any of the threads here. All right, so that's nice and secure. Now we'll go around, do all of them, and then actually just double, triple check that every one of them secure, as well as the screws on the entire aircraft. Just make sure everything's nice and tight and get back once that's done. All right, so we've gone ahead and made sure that our FPV system is working. We do have a video signal from the camera to the transmitter, and we could also check our settings and our battery life from there. We've secured all the props on their motors, and also gone across the entire aircraft just to make sure everything is nice and tight and securely fastened. Other than that, this thing is ready to fly, so in our next video, we're gonna be walking you through exactly what to expect in your first successful test flight. If you're receiving this for the first time, you're gonna to wanna to do a compass calibration, so there's another video that we have to walk you through exactly how to do the compass calibration on the Tornado specifically. Until then, we'll see you on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.